All right. So how are all of you feeling? Are you feeling good? Are you feeling inspired to join the tech industry? How's anyone feeling? Tired? Excited? Make some noise, people. <laughs> all right. So I hope you're, you're now super excited to, to learn if is it really possible to join the tech industry without a CS degree. What do people look for when they're hiring? How many, how many of you are, are looking for jobs or you know, exploring? Hey, good. I'll tell all of your managers. Ha! Check there. All right, so now next we're going to move on to our panel discussion where we will have four speakers to share more about some, what are some tips, tips and best practices when it comes to looking for a job in the tech industry. So now let's give a warm applause to our four speakers. Please come up on stage. It's part of the copper color, the Zendes color. Ah. No, he's going to take green because it's the Zen desk color. Oh, really? I don't know. Oh, you don't have to match your photo, just, just saying. Just in case you're wondering. Okay, so all of you have a mic on your, on your seat. So make sure it's check that it's on. And let's get started. So today we're going to talk about, again, like I mentioned earlier, what are some of the best practices, what are the industry standards when it comes to hiring, how you can stand out um, in a perspective of a woman. Sorry guys, next time maybe. So, so we're gonna, we're go it's going to be more of a panel discussion. I'll be asking questions, but we're going to have a Q&A after the, this, this panel. So do feel free to start thinking about questions as we go along and discuss some topics. So, Let's start with an introduction. Why don't we go down the road, tell us who you are, your background, and a little bit about the company that you work for. Hello. Hi. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. You've been not talking for a long time. So uh, my name is Sao Xiang. Um, I've been in the industry for 23 years now, this year. So uh, graduated in 95. So 2018, that's uh, 23 years. Um, I work in SP Digital. Uh, I lead a team of uh, engineers developing uh, next generation products for a single power. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I think that's about it. Well, the, the other reason that I choose to this chair is because I'll be the second person to answer any questions. Oh. <laughs> Very strategic. But you know, I can just call you out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, my name is Lo Sheng. I work for Zendesk. Uh, I've been with soft, in soft, working with software for 20 years and you know the reason that uh, I joined Zendesk was because when Zobin was acquired, the team was very young and they needed someone to raise the average age profile. <laughs> so I was hired on marriage of my advanced age, which I uh, single-handedly raised uh, a couple of years with the age profile. So that's how I ended up with Zendesk. Hi, um, I'm Qi Yuan. I'm working in the tech recruiting team in Facebook right now. Um, in the past several years, yeah, um, colleague was Elijah. So, um, so in the past several years, I've been hiring for software engineers um, into Facebook. Uh, hi everyone, I'm Jillian. Uh, I'm one of the co-founders of uh, Homage. Uh, Homage is um, just very quickly an on-demand uh, home care solution. Uh, for seniors and also those who are unwell. Um, so I started Homage about two years ago. Before that, uh, I guess undergrad, I don't, I can't remember count now. I think I can relate. <laughs> well, too long, too long ago. Uh, so I did, I did my undergrad in, in computer science and then moved on to more non-technical areas. And so um, we have to share a little bit more of those who, for those who are looking into um, working within tech, but also non-technical, but also within the technical space. Yeah, you're also the tech co-founder of the last startup, right? Sorry? You're also the tech co-founder of the last startup, right? Oh, yes. So, when I, so after um, graduating in, uh, uh, so I guess previous life is I was a software engineer um, for about five years and then decided to move more into the business uh, space. So after graduating from grad school, I um, uh, made a lot of mistakes and spent one year just kind of uh, having a big fun employed and and um, uh, you know I guess 
been through so many failures and, and got rejected by most companies and things like that. So, uh, but I, I knew I wanted to start a company. So that, that first company that I started uh, just very quickly, um, yeah, I was, uh, I was, I was the C, uh, chief technology officer yeah, and chief product officer. Amazing. Before we move on to the next question, I just want to give, I want to just highlight that this is our actually our most gender diverse panel at Tech Ladies, because we usually only have women speakers. So <laughs> it's like an alternate universe. Yeah, let's clap. <laughs> so tell us more about. So I this panel is really diverse in terms of the companies that you work at. Uh, and, and, and the size and the stage of a company. So, so could you share a little bit more about how the hiring process for technical roles is like? How many rounds? Do you make people do pair programming, take home assignments? How is it like? So, um, disclaimer, I don't really do much recruitment directly myself nowadays. I think uh, probably the best person to ask among here would probably be Mike, but since he's many the mic, so I have to answer this. Um, so we have been hiring and uh, we have been wrapping up quite rapidly. Uh, the recruitment process was designed by uh, the team. So uh, we run through a, a number of filters before we actually uh, started bringing people in, uh, reviewing the CVs and so on. And then after that, uh, uh, we go through uh, one round of interview and then uh, we do pair programming, I think two rounds of pair programming and then uh, there might or might not be a round uh, before finally going for confirmation for that. Okay. So there, there is a lot more, um, I would say, technical assessment than most because we, we want to make sure there's a fit right, uh, in terms of uh, uh, both technical as well as, as cultural. So. Pair programming not necessarily is just for technical fit. It's really to see how uh, well a person actually uh, will say react in the situation where we need to actually program with somebody else. So uh, that's how we actually do recruitment. Okay, maybe I'll, I'll skip motion for a while and then come back to you later. More time to think, more time to okay. think. So um, I want to hear from Ti uh, yeah. from your perspective as uh, from Facebook as a big company. Um, so, like I just said, I've been hiring for software engineers into Facebook. So what I'm going to share is more like developer programmers role, other than um, other technical IT kind of role. So for engineers, we do, despite the recruiter pre-screen, we do two rounds of technical coding interviews um, through VC, so video call. So we don't do home assignment or online testing. Um, we are only doing real-time coding. So you'll be talking to one engineer over VC and for 45 minutes each round. Um, in the, within the 45 minutes, you will be um, asked several related knowledge questions. If you are, if you are um, gonna apply for web developer, there's gonna be some knowledge based on web developing. And also there will be coding questions. So there will be two or three coding questions. You're gonna write the code real-time and then the engineer and you will just say go through the calls if there's any bugs or if there's a workable solution or if it's a, it's, there's a better solution after that. So you're going to explain, you need to be able to explain, able to execute the code. Um, so there are two rounds for that, video coding interviews. If both of the rounds have uh, positive feedbacks, then we're going to move forward to the on-site interview, which is the full interview loop which include four small rounds, 45 minutes each. Um, there will be two codings, again, um, that face-to-face, -face, um, you're not going to tap into computer anymore. All the face-to-face -face interviews are going to be writing on the board. So for two rounds of coding, you'll be writing codes, two or three questions, again, um, on the whiteboard. And there will be two rounds of, uh, sorry, one round of system design interview. So you're gonna, probably going to design um, infrastructure, or um, you need to explain um, if you're going to build an app, how you're going to do that. Um, that's the third round. And then last one will be a um, behavior interview. So behavior inter interview is more of a career talk. So we're going to be talking about your past experience, your um, problem solving skills, teamwork. So more of your soft skills rather than technical. Um, this is the whole interview uh, process. It's not too long. Uh, <laughs> 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 only uh, 
uh, you know, uh, talking over the phone two rounds and then meeting four different people other than your recruiter. That's it. So pretty easy, simple. Um, you can prepare well. Um, it would be a good, yeah. Um, how many of you feel completely demoralized about working at Facebook as an engineer now? I don't know about you, but I'm like, whoa, newfound respect for my engineering peers. So, Lotion, I kept you after Tiran because I think you have a perspective of uh, Zopin in, in its early days versus Zendesk now. So, I'm just wondering, you know, is there any differences in terms of a hiring or uh, if not, you know, what's the process like? Okay, so when I joined um, Zendesk, um, that's shortly after acquisition, the engineering team was uh, 16 people. Today we stand at about 60. And one of my main job was to grow the team. So the fact that I'm still sitting here means I didn't do my job too badly. And one of the things that have changed over the years, of course, how do you recruit people? When a founder started off, um, they didn't have a lot of money. They didn't, they didn't know what they're doing. This was the first job. So recruiting people basically is going out to a classmate to intimidate them. Tell them that you know you're not Vietnamese students. You're not going to get any job in Singapore. It's best bet to join me. And you go to this guy. You know, give it your studies. You know, forget about a career as an architect. Why did you join my company and work? So that's how. It's pretty much how secret society recruit people. <laughs> right? So that's that's how it was started. And when I came on board, I was just given the task to grow the team. And it's getting quite hard to intimidate people to join a company. So we have to evolve the process to be a bit more professional. Um, and I think in the end, we end up process very similar to how Facebook does. So right now, it starts with the recruiter uh, talking to you. Um, and then we give the recruiter a set of technical questions just to basically to establish a basic uh, technical level of where the candidate is. And then after that, we do give people a home assignment. We're not afraid of people sharing and cheating. Uh, because what follow after that is a remote coding sessions with the, our engineers, which you know they will take you know ask some questions, maybe about the assignment that you've written, and uh, you know other general coding questions. Uh, prior to that, of course, your home assignment will be evaluated, and you know we will look at the code right to see for clarity how defensive you are, how thorough your thinking is, how mature you are, and so on. So once you pass all that, then you come on site for three interviews. The first two are technical. Um, they were doing on-site coding again, which is to make sure that you are the one who wrote your home assignment. Um, and then we also ask you about some general system level questions just on, on your understanding of the bigger pictures. Then the last round, we also do behavior interview, where you, know, you, will, you will meet me and probably the prior managers and the, probably the people that are gonna work close with. And what we wanted to know is um, how did you develop a career so far? We're looking at uh, you know the difficult people that you have to work with, the difficult situations um, that you have to go through. Personally, I'm particularly interested in the failures that you, you've been through uh, because it shows the character's resilience. Um, we, I have interviewed a lot of people who are you know the number one in the class from kindergarten to the masters, and those people always scare me. You know, like, you know, I'm going to ask them, like, what is the biggest failure and challenge in life that you have ever faced? You know, so they will think for a long, long time because they never fail. And, like, you know, I, I missed the bus this morning. And, and you know, <laughs> and that makes me really worried because, you know, like, once you go into the job, we fail all the time. And we, we, we're interested in candidates who can take failures. So I feel like the intimidation tactic can work now. So you just... You either you should go and apply, go through the interview process at Facebook, <laughs> get super scared, fail, and then join Zendesk, right? <laughs> no, you probably Pro won't fail, and then you're going to join Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what about uh, Julian? I'm interested in your perspective from a startup hiring tech talents. Yeah, I think for a startup, we, um, we as well, I think, learn a lot beyond technical skills, because it's very important to start up like a family. So now, now we have 20 full-time people, uh, about uh, eight of them are engineers. Um, so if you think about that, it's almost like you have to, we have this thing where we say that if you can, one of the things that you can engage, whether this person is a culture fit, of course there's many other things, is can you spend a whole one, a whole day stuck at the airport with, with this person? Um, yeah, but I, I really relate, I think, with, uh, with what was said, you know, I think, um, uh, there, there are times when the candidate is just 
Uh, for example, there's this one candidate that we, we interviewed, and he was this amazing, um, he, he was absolutely top, top notch, right? He, he graduated from undergrad computer science, and he was just everything that was uh, from a technical skills perspective. But again, I think for a startup, what you're looking for is really, I, I do have that fire in your belly. Are you, are you hungry to learn? Are you, do you have the desire to make that impact? And when we asked him, what was your biggest challenge? The exact same question. He literally said, he thought for a long time, he sat there, he, it, was, it was a very awkward um, five minutes. <laughs> so we just sat there and he, the next thing he said was, um, yeah, I had a very tough exam in my final year in, co in, wow. in college. And, and so we, we just, you know, I think me and Lily, we just looked at each other and so we're like, oh, okay, okay, um, that's, that's good to know. But, but, uh, um, <laughs> So I think it goes to show, I mean, for our process, we, we, uh, we, have, uh, we try to link it to what we're doing in the day. So uh, first two phone calls, there's one that's more just an introdu uh, introduction, your background, why you're looking to work at home edge. Second is technical, so on the phone, just a series of technical questions. Uh, before that, and then the third one is, you get a take home assignment, and the assignment is relating to a problem that we're solving at, at, um, at home edge. So a, a literal an engineering problem right now, ideally is in the past sprint or in the current sprint. Uh, so when, by the time it comes to them, let's say they pass that phase, uh, we're not worried about them cheating as well because in the on-site, uh, we take them through, we ask them to talk through their, their code, right? And um, So if they do a good job of pretending, and I guess they, faking it, they, they, they can still pass, but then what we actually do is ex ask them to extend um, uh, that project. So, add a function, or you know, um, do. Uh, how would you change the code if this this requirement was to change? And then we'll see how they perform. And I think that's that's what we do. Um, just one one interview. So if they pass that, they, they get called back for a fourth one. Uh, just in terms of the final behavioral cultural set. So I think uh, no no in person. Um, I guess when they code, they we typically let them code on the, on the laptop. There's no remote coding, so I think that's that's that. Yeah. yeah. It seems like there's a lot of focus on non-technical soft skills. I think touch on on resilience, failure, that face challenges, fire in the belly. What are some other things that you look for when you're hiring tech talents? Anyone can answer. Well, I think. Um, when I when I joined the open team, right, one of the things that I noticed about the team is uh, the company is very product focused and they're very particular about the user experience. Um, I think the design team that we have is probably among the very best in the world. And so when we hire engineers, right, we try to look for people who are very product centric in thinking. Now there's a big difference here because there are engineers who are out there to build a product for people to use and there are engineers who are out there who are obsessed with technology and they're just going around and find a random problem just so that they can apply the technologies. And I think both Zopin and Zander, I think we consider ourselves first and foremost a product company and we want to look for people who are passionate about the product they build and you know, they're on a quest to find the right technology rather than the other way around that they're very obsessed with technology and just trying to find a problem to solve. And I, I think that will be a key um, trait that I look for of the engineers um, when, when, when I do my interviews. I think um, I do echo what Shen was saying, that uh, the passion <coughs> part. Like, um, I know like to Facebook sounds like a big company or established, but we always say we're only 1% down, <coughs> we are still maintain a very startup kind of um, culture inside of Facebook. We're still trying to do a lot of new things, and one of our value is um, to be more impact either to your own circle, your community, either to the country, to the world. So when we're looking for people, we always ask, why are you interested in Facebook? We don't want to hear the answer like, Facebook is a big tech company, it's famous. Like, it's, it's that no answer at all. So we want to see the people who are passionate about it. I'm not scared when I ask people this question, they'll say, oh, your that feature is really not good. Um, we hate that, my friends hate that. Um, I think you need to improve this. I don't. Uh, I don't. Um, I don't mind hear this kind of answers. That means they're thinking about our products. They're thinking how we can make more impact to the community. 
So um, through all the interview process, um, a lot of interviewers will be asking like your passion about Facebook. They want to hear how you want to do um, your work and how you want to improve our product, or how you, other than your working time, are you doing some assignments? Like are you doing some small projects by yourself, even though you build an app for your kids. It's, it's, it shows you have this passion, you want to build something. So we are looking for like the builders and who are passionate about like making an impact to the community. So Sean, you want to add to that? Um, I think a lot of it really has been safe, um, and we do practice a lot of that. But personally, I, I really, um, I mean, passion is something that uh, we look for as well in the team. Uh, but what I really look for are people who can work well with the team. Because I, I always believe it's, it's team first. And uh, software development, yes, you can evolve as an individual. But most of the time, in larger software development, it's, uh, it's still in a team. So no matter how good you are, you can't work well in a team. It's very, very difficult to integrate you in. And therefore, you will be alone. Right? Um, so that is me. Primary thing that I look for, uh, of course, I think technical fit um, is can, can always be taught, right? Because like this bootcamp has taught um, so many participants. You can always learn new technologies. You can always learn something. And we have Vina. Vina is a bootcamp grad for the first batch, and she works at SP now. Yeah, so she's a, a prime example, right? Um, I think you can learn the skills, but I the uh, personality, the uh, the, the the, uh, the fit in the culture and uh, the passion, those are very difficult things to learn. Mm -hmm. um, so those are the things I will look at. Right. So the next sort of like key question is, how important is a CS degree when it comes to hiring tech talent? Does it mean that people in the audience who have studied CS, you know, it's complete trash, you've wasted three to four years of your life. You know, how important is, um, is having a CS degree? I think it's um, it's not uh, critical actually. So just to give you an example, our uh, one junior and software engineer that we hired, he doesn't have a, a computer science uh, degree. He went through three months of the web development immersive at General Assembly. I think when we and then he became a, a, a teacher assistant uh, at GA uh, General Assembly, and then we met him at one of the web development uh, uh, exhibition programs, and he was this so he was so enthusiastic. I think. Culture fit, you know, people always talk about culture. I think um, it's, it's, so for him, so culture fit, I mean, you know, people always think, okay, does that, what does that mean? Does, it, does that mean massages or yoga, you know? And, and, and. <laughs> so for us, when we looked at him, we of course assessed the skills, but what was more important again was his, uh, what was driving him to want to uh, join homage? Uh, what was what was the motivating factors behind his uh, his I guess his core right? Um, he was so excited to contribute to uh, what the impact of homage that that it was just very obvious that he could he he was you know he gelled so well with the team off the bat. He spent a couple of hours in our office and it was just very obvious that um, he had the same values. He was being driven by. He was going to make decisions in the same way that we wanted him to. So I think. Um, that we that we felt that we all you know were in the same having the same guiding principles basically. So uh, for computer science, I mean skills, he picked it up in three months. He worked really really hard, and then he got himself a. Uh, now he's a junior developer here with us, uh, and it's actually progressing really really well. So, so um, I I think having a computer science degree is uh, important. Uh, but more and, and okay, let me let me correct a little bit. Uh, I think having the computer science skills is very important, right? Um, whether you learn it to a degree or you learn it through other means, it's important. Uh, it's, it's not as important, right? Because what is important is that you have the, the, the background and the capabilities, and of course the uh, ability to learn more. Uh, I I generally think that you you do need to have uh, enough uh, legwork. Finger work, I don't know. But you, you need to have enough like um, 
immersion into computer science to really understand the background. Uh, I mean, the, I actually encounter and, and speak to a lot of programmers who, I mean, this is one of my pet peeves, right? So um, if you get into programming and you don't know the basics, right, um, it's very difficult for somebody to proceed much further. Right? Um, you do need to know your fundamentals, right? So you, you can't get away from fundamentals. So wherever route you reach to, you do need to have that uh, as part of your your journey. Uh, whether it's through a book camp, whether it's through computer science, uh, a degree, whichever it is, but you do need to have, to have enough coverage for you to reach that point where you can uh, not just be somebody who codes, but somebody who can think. Uh, and they be able to apply basic principles and then move on both beyond that. Answering the questions, I don't have a degree in computer science. Um, my background is in electrical engineering. And um, so coming to coding, I have a big gap to, to bridge. And actually, in even the current team um, within Zendesk, we have very senior engineers who, do, who, who didn't come from computer science background. Um, as I say, you know, they started with intimidating people. They forced people to give up a degree. Uh, you know, we had people who went on to just spend a week in a school of architecture, and the, the founders managed to persuade him with a stupid idea to do a six-year degree in architecture, and gave up and joined um, Zopin. Now he's a staff engineer. He's working in San Francisco, and one of the most senior principal engineers in Zendesk. Um, his background is law. Even in Singapore, we have engineers with backgrounds in statistics and mathematics, and they're all very skilled um, engineers. So from a hiring manager perspective, I think to me, actually, I, I want some engineers, some of the developers, not all of them to come from computer science background. The problem is, you know, when you have everybody's computer science background, everybody thinks they're computer scientists, and every problem looks like a nail. And they, they all tend to be have a very similar approach. So I think from a hiring manager perspective, I deliberately and on the lookout, hoping to assemble a team with some diversity. It doesn't mean that I cannot have a team with no computer science. You know, that, that will be too difficult to get it going. But given enough you know, computer science graduates, I, I do want people from a different background and they, they take a different approach to the problem. And I think diversity is good in, in all forms, right? Not just gender, but as well as education background. Um, so I don't think anyone should feel inadequate. Having said that, you know, I think formal understanding of computer science like what Sao is still very important, right? So, but you, 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 you can't pursue that as you, as you work. Uh, it doesn't have to be the first step. Um, yeah, so this is just how, in fact, if you ask me, you know, I, I, I really think it's important that not all the programmers come from computer science. Yeah, I would say computer science degree is good, but it's okay you don't have, it's not a cut that you do, if you don't have, we will not hire you. It depends on how good you are a programmer. It doesn't, it doesn't look back to 10 years before that when you, you do a computer science degree. Um, an example is that we did have a candidate come to our final rounds. He was a musician in his like, first half of his life. Is until like, team? No, <laughs> he's like part-time musician. Um, so, um, yeah, so I, I think it, what, uh, what important is like you didn't do that before. I know like for myself it's like you back then you wasn't mature enough to choose a major that you thought you're going to be pursuing a career. So you might do something others. Um, but then later on if you want to do this, you need to study. Like you need to bridge the gap. If you if you want really want to go to this down this path, you need to study your own way. Um, either self learning, online courses, boot camp. You need to find your way to bridge the gap. And down to realistic situation is passing the interviews at the company. For example, our coding interviews are going to involve a lot of um, computer science fundamentals like data structures, algorithms, graphics. If you have never learned that, you're not going to pass the interview. So very realistic situation in your life is that before the interview at least, you need to study computer science. Not a degree, but learn by yourself or through a program. So there's a sales pitch here. If you're, you're not very good with those things, you can try, try applying to Zendesk. I've been asking, 
our interviewer to shape our questions to be not overly computer science centric because otherwise we could lock out ta raw talents who, who, who didn't come from a former, who didn't come through a former computer science. So, talk to me. Yeah, also, also at home, actually. <laughs> uh, yeah, actually, we are hiring for, for junior front end and back end uh, developers. Um, so yeah, if, if anyone is keen, it would be great to, to visit the site, I think, uh, just a little. <laughs> so how can someone who uh, doesn't have a CS degree or any working experience show that uh, they can, can be an a engineer? Or, or in another way, can, how can someone without a, a, CS degree, a CS degree or any working experience get, even get to the interview, not have their resume thrown to the trash? Or do you want to go? Um, so I think is I've seen a lot of resume that you say Facebook. If you are an engineer at Facebook, on your resume you just say, oh, um, I work on Facebook or newsfeed. That's that. We're looking for more details. What exactly you did? So use a verb to start your bullet points in your resume. And say, I restructured the system, or I um, was doing the coding, or I'm just debugging, um, or I work with a team of four, I lead a team of three. So be more spe specific, so when we see that, we can see what specifically that you did. And also, um, I know maybe you haven't had a you know professional experience in a company as a programmer, but you have done a lot. Like, that all the apps that you just showed, it was pretty awesome um, with the school and also um, with the uh, Elijah's <laughs> uh, application. So these are all very good examples of what you did before. So mention that in your resume um, so we see that you have done this other than your full-time job or other than what you are, whatever you are doing right now. Um, GitHub is another good showing as well if you have been contributing a lot on GitHub. Um, include your link, we can see. Uh, although I don't, I can't read the, go to the codes, but as a recruiter, I can see how active you are and have you been like doing a lot of, um, in the repository, we can all see your activities. So it will be a good showing that you have a passion. Although you haven't been a programmer in your company before, but you have the potential. So be specific when you tell people what you do. <laughs> um, what is that? Like, leaving talks. But anyway, um, GitHub repository, I think uh, you want to get into the door, you need to show the code, right? You are a programmer, uh, you want to be a programmer, you aspire to be a programmer, you're passionate about programming, then show, show the code. Show a GitHub repository, show, don't, don't zip up your, your code and send it to us. People do that. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, yeah, I got like uh, a letter once. But printed out. Printed out their code? Nice. What? So show the GitHub repository, show um, to the, to the code, right? Um, and then get you somewhere, right? Uh, at least in the dog. Uh, I think the. Um, so. Uh, Cover letters are probably not necessary. I, I never read cover letters. Uh, show your resume, show what you have done before. Uh, but if you are really going for programming, just show your code. I think that's the best way. I, we, I, we actually have a prime example of that um, we actually hire one um, engineer from the chemical. So I think going back to the previous topic about not having a computer science degree, right? that does not mean that it's OK to apply if you can't code. You, know, you still must be a very competent coder, and the best way to for us to understand how good you are is to read your code. And one, of, I remember one of the guys we hired. His background um, was in chemical engineering, and he showed us his code. And you know, like very quickly, the senior engineers and the team has decided to take him on because it's very impressive. He shows the tools that he he, he wrote to solve some of his problems while he was working as a chemical engineer in in you know in, in Pulau Buko. And then you know he, he he showed the tools, the visualizations that he did. So there are many ways to showcase your coding abilities, and, and this is prime example. Looking at the code, everybody was very impressed. That's it, you know, like taking it out, and it's still working with us. 
Yeah, I think uh, just to go along with the theme of just show and don't, don't tell, I think for particularly for engineering, the proof is in the pudding. So um, what you want to do is uh, uh, find ways to, well, I think code, code is important. I think, you know, having GitHub, making sure you showcase a lot of uh, commits and things like that. Um, and just that active, that active desire to learn um, can also come through in quite a few different ways. So showing you're involved in communities, even like tech, tech ladies, that's a lot for you. Thank you. Um, yeah, um, but I think another thing is just going back to that point about being product centric. So if you're, particularly for tech companies, I think most technology applications and software is built for groups of people and the users, right? So having, show, showcasing, um, when you build a product or when you have a demo or a portfolio online, uh, when you share your links, uh, actual, actually deployed sites like what you guys went through earlier, it's just for for someone who's hiring, and particularly for a startup, I think that's just, it's very um, appealing because, uh, you know, what particularly for a startup, I think one, one thing that you're, we are looking for is people who can really connect the dots to building things that people need and that can solve their problems. So if you are able to showcase real life applications that you've built, designed, conceptualized, and then launched yourself and then tested, plus you know you had integrative, te integrative testing, that is something that um, a startup really needs, right? That's a, that's a, that's a, 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 a capability that uh, is absolutely valuable to, to an early stage company. Um, so I think I would say definitely focus on the parts that really would showcase your understanding of building a product, not for the sake of just a bunch of code, you know, chuck somewhere, but uh, relating to actual use cases. So I'm going to ask one more question before we open up to the floor. So you definitely want to ask a question because we may or may not be giving you some things. May or may not. Right. So, so how do you source for tech talents? On, or, you know, in, in, on the flip side, how should people be positioning, where should they be marketing themselves at to be found by, by you guys? We sponsor dinners. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so attend all the events where there's a sponsored dinner. Right? Well, I think, um, I think the man, they're, they're, they're the short-term approach, right? I mean, of course, we, 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 in the beginning, we go to recruitment agency, but very soon uh, we have our own um, recruiting capabilities. We, you know, we, we need a sustained effort. Recruitment is a long-term um, process, right? So we're not looking for staffing agency, just push warm bodies into. So um, it is a strategy investment in the long run to engage the community, uh, to let people know about, first of all, know about Zendesk. The other things that we do is we, we run an engineering open house that we also invite people to come and see what we do, and we welcome criticism and suggestions. In fact, after the last engineering open house, some of the guys from PayPal saw you know something similar and said, you know, I think the way we do it is a lot more mature. You know, that's great. You know, and then that we can then follow on conversations to say, uh, you know, tell us how, how you guys approach this problem. So I think being engaged and create a communication forum with the aim of uh, building the entire community's capabilities up. Uh, eventually benefit us, right? I mean, as long as the, the engineering quality in Singapore goes up, um, you know, so, for example, when Facebook comes in, many companies like us, oh, you know, they're, they're going to compete for higher, and, uh, but my reply is, you know, yeah, you know, now we may lose a candidate to Facebook, but in three years, I'm going to have a Facebook engineer as my team. Oh. <laughs> 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 yeah, so I'm kidding. <laughs> um, so, um, back to the hiring, um, LinkedIn right now is like up trending website that I think most of the recruiters will look at. So, keep your LinkedIn profile updated, what you have been doing, treat it as your resume. So, um, you, you don't need to write a lot of like an essay, some bullet points that like what you did, what organization, how long. Um, be specific, again, use a verb to start your bullet point. Um, that's how recruiters see the, the website, but at the same time, instead of waiting for someone approach to you, you need to stay tuned. 
um, follow, like there are a lot of, um, yeah, I'm sure every company have a website that you want to follow if you want to check their information. Usually they have a lot of information, their updates, their employees, what people do. So you can always check their information and also follow their career page. Um, again, a lot of companies have a career page on Facebook. Um, so you can follow their Facebook page. Um, same time, Facebook ourselves, we have a career page on Facebook page as well. So we have a um, Singapore Facebook career page, or if you want to looking for jobs in other region, um, we have a global Facebook career page page um, that you can uh, follow. Also as a programmer, this is not about like uh, looking for jobs anymore, but we have a page I don't remember the, exactly the link, uh, but it's Facebook engineering. So we share a lot of open source projects, what we have done recently, like if you know F8 that we do every year, there are a lot of knowledge there. If you want to keep learning or follow the, the, the new tag, <laughs> follow the new tag, um, go follow this page. There will be a lot of discussion and the engineer will be really discussing with you, answer questions if you want to ask. Um, there are a lot of valuable information online. You need to follow yourself. Whenever they have an opening, then you know instead of waiting. Mm. Yeah, we, we, uh, we rely a lot on, uh, on referrals. So people, that's why I think uh, communities and events actually really helps and meetups. Because, um, so particularly as well, current engineers, um, they refer their friends. So, our first engineer, um, because we were very much in, you know, we have really found our product market fit, so we're very much looking to productize very quickly. Um, so we, we got lucky with Big Shot because uh, how we how we found it actually was through uh, someone who was setting up a hire at the time in Singapore, right? Um, and uh, we got connected to him through a, a very informal meetup uh, that was just a, a you know, small group setting, coffee, and he used to work at a startup in, in LA, he's Singaporean, but he, and then he worked for a book here in Singapore, and then, um, so he's quite senior, he's uh, to mid level, he spent about six to seven years uh, as a software engineer at different tech companies, and then he brought on his friend, right, who was a software engineer that he knew, so I think that warm, warm referrals always work the best, um, and the way to, uh, I think get them is very much, uh, I think just uh, getting to know people within the startup space or within the technology space uh, really helps because then you never know um, when someone can introduce you to the next person who then, you know. Um, so there, but there have been new platforms, I think Hired is a good example, Get Links is a company um, that does almost like a curated matching for jobs in tech. And it also helps you set some of your parameters of where you want to work, what you're looking for, what types of work, front end, back end, tech, uh, tech stack. And I think that works uh, quite well, particularly on the software engineering side. And um, but I, I mean, I, I've got, I know companies, for example, around here as well, who have hired uh, software engineers, junior, mid, senior, through uh, one uh, another platform called Wantedly. So I think these new and up, up and coming ones because they put more of a personal touch on it. They organize events. They have these communities. It becomes quite, uh, quite not as intimidating because you start to get to know the people behind, and it becomes more more casual. You know, so uh, I think that's that's a good way to go. All right, and now we'll open the the questions to the floor. So for the first five people who ask a question, you get a gift sponsored by Neural Planner. One of our in-kind sponsors, which, uh, which creates a planner that hacks your brain for instant productivity, creativity, and happiness. So, does anyone have a question for our panel? So, keep your hands up on the lady at the back. This question is for Jion. I'm wondering, uh, I don't know much about the engineering organization structure in Facebook, and I'm curious if you have any 
internal organizations that are run like sort of many part of Facebook type startups. Sorry, I think I didn't get your second question. Like mini Facebook? Like, like miniature startup type organizations within the company. I don't think we have. Um, but in terms of the engineering structure, so are you um, asking about the level structure, how we work on different products like Newsfeed, uh, Instagram, WhatsApp? Is that okay, I guess I guess more about how um, how the engineers are divided into teams, how recruitment goes into okay. the sub organizations within the company. Okay, cool. Thanks. Um, so how the engineer team works is um, again back to what I said earlier. Although people think we are very big right now, but we still maintain a very startup kind of culture internally. How we keep that is we still keep um, moving fast. Um, that's one of our value, and how we achieve that is we keep the team small. So for each engineer team, they probably have like fifteen each people work on one specific feature. For example, mm, photo sharing. So there will be 15 people, 15 engineers work on this photo sharing feature. And these 15 people, they are not only backend or something. So they, uh, there will be two backends, one front end, two mobile, um, one machine learning, and of course there will be product manager within the team as well. So this team will be specifically working on how we improve this feature, how we work on this feature. Same to all the teams in Facebook. There will be thousands of teams working internally on a very specific feature. And how we hiring is we do a very general hiring. Not general, through, not general as like we hire everyone, but it's a general hiring will say, we are hiring for backend engineer but we don't assign teams. So at Facebook, we have this awesome program called Bootcamp, again. Um, so all the hires who say backend engineer again, the whole interview process will be assessing whether you're a good backend developer or not through all the coding, design, and also behavior interviews. We never assign you a team, but we, of course, gonna ask you, are you what, what is your passion? If you do join Facebook, is there anything that you want to work on? So after you join, after you get offered and get everything, get on board, the first six to eight weeks is our boot camp program. So through that several weeks, you will have the opportunity to um, all the projects that we do, um, all the things that you know or you never know before, uh, before you join Facebook. So we're going to open to you all the um, future plan as well, say um, now we have this uh, newsfeed team, ranking team, search team, we are all looking for people. So you join this boot camp, learn what, what teams are there that you want to join. Then you choose the team that you are interested in. Again, we want to we wanna have the people who are passionate about the thing that you're working on. So we don't assign teams, they will choose their own teams. Same to all the other pipelines like mobile engineer, front engineers, um, machine learning engineers. They all get the chance to choose their own team. So that's how we divided people into, into it. And just example, not example, just story that I've been working at Facebook for almost three years. All the engineers that I have known for the, in the past three years, I never know a single engineer who have only worked on one project in one team ever since they joined Facebook. So there's a lot of opportunities that you can move around teams. Either you ship the codes or like you finish this project, you feel like you want to change um, to work on something differently. You want to work on comments or work on the React Natives. Then there will be opportunities. Even though you want to switch pipeline, you were a backend, so now you want to do a mobile. Then we now started a program that you you want to move to a new pipeline that you've never done before, we have a mini training time, like two or three weeks before you join the new team. So there are a lot, it's very fluid inside of the company, inside of the organization. You can 
like go over to the um, team that you're interested in. Right, thank you very much. So, uh, Anna in front has a question. Hui Jing, where are you with the mic? Oh, oh, you went over that? Okay, we'll take your, yeah, take your question first. Hi, Ray here. So, a bit of context. Um, similar to one of the bootcamp participants, I used to, I have an IS degree about nine years ago. So, um, and I left the industry after that. So now I'm trying to come back, picking up classes myself, self-study. Um, but at which point, I mean, you look at all these development jobs and they ask like nine, they want nine different things, but say you fulfill three, you know, where, where you are now. At which point is it time to, to start applying? You, know, you definitely can't take all nine. I don't think you want all nine, but like, where? I guess just to rephrase the question a little bit, it's more of like, how do you know you're ready for a particular JD? And I think that there's a lot of a few articles that I read that women tend to feel more confident about applying a specific role if they apply to all the all the uh, pointers in a JD. Men probably about I cannot really remember is it 70, 60 percent of the JD, and they will feel confident enough to to uh, apply for it. So to rephrase the question a little bit. At what point do you think that it's okay to just apply? Okay, so let me try to attempt to answer that question. I think um, because the growth that the, com the setup I was in, I was able to see some of that struggle. I think you have to remember that whether you are ready for the company, there's also the case where the company is ready for you, right? So if you're coming in fresh um, and your programming skill is still early, it's probably hard to get into a company who's very mature. You know, like we, we, the, the kind of candidates that we could take on um, three years ago may not be the people that we can take on now. But it doesn't mean that they're not good. You know, by now these people are very good. In fact, they are now very senior engineers. But the state of company at that point will require the programmer to be at a certain level already. So I think the way to look at it is, is, a, is, is a match ma making process, right? You want to look for a company who, who's ready for you and you are ready for the company. So I, if you find that you really don't meet most of the criteria, for example, in the, I mean, in the more mature company, in the more mature team, you'll be looking for people who has experienced battling scales, you know, large scales. And if you have not done it, it's just impossible to do the job. But then there are many startups who are more interested about getting something to the market quickly. You know, there will be good ways to hone your skills. So I think the way to look at it is not just choosing the job, but you have to choose a company at a state that is matching to, to where you are. You, you know, if you are very, very experienced, large, um, you know, you, you have a lot of experience with dealing with large scale backend, you may not want to join a startup because the scale is so small. So vice versa. So I think the question should be the case of, can you find the right company that, that, that matches the skill? All right, next. Hi, I'm Anna. And I used to be women in FinTech. And the number of women to men in FinTech is only 11%. So considering that this is a tech ladies event, I think my question is, what are the, what is the ratio of female and male engineers in your respective organization? Are you happy with it? And if you're not, can you share with us some of the diversity programs that you're implementing to ensure that the female engineers in this room can be working in wherever you're hiring? Thank you. Sponsoring meetups. Sponsoring tech ladies, in specific. <laughs> this is the worst question for me. Um, so yeah, when my like everyone's just looking at two of you. <laughs> okay, but, okay. I, I, I'll be very honest, right? So when the, my, my but my, my managers came on and said, you know, like we need to work on the diversity, gender diversity in Zendesk engineering. And you know, as a whole, Zendesk engineering has a serious issues. And you look at across my team and say, I think yours is a lot more serious. And um, it, is, it is a very difficult um, problem. And I think if, I, if you ask me like, what are some things that we, we have done to try to address this problem, right? I think, Number one, Zendesk has all recognized that tech has to get better to improve gender diversity. Um, we have people who are, are responsible to drive programs uh, through educations, uh, such as you know, make sure that we're not 
you know, things like conscious bias get out of the way. But also the other ways, other things we try to do is to try to be objective, right? If you look, if you remember how we have structured our interview process, we try to start with looking at your code first, right? So we assess people first by the quality of code that you write. We try not to be biased, you know, by by your nationality, you know, by your accent. So I think I think discrimination, subconscious discrimination, comes in many forms. It doesn't have to be gender, right? We all know that that cuts across many lines, just beyond gender. It can be you can be the same skin color but a different nationality. There'll be pay. I bet you can find pay differences across those, right? So I think what we, we recognize that this could exist. We structure ways. Number one is um, code first. Read the code. Let the code speak for itself. Number two is we try to. The next step we're trying to do is try to incorporate checklists in in the candidate evaluations, right? So it would not be a case that would I want to go, you know, with dinner with this guy and you know, go for. A, I mean that that is so subjective, right? So we want to say what does this job entail, so like. If you didn't need certain attributes and skills, you know, just black and white, have that checklist. At the end, we tell you the score. We try to be as objective as we can, try to take that how I feel about this, you know, this person out of the way. Because I think naturally we attract people who speak like us, looks like us. That's just how it is. So we, we, we try to minimize that. Um, we, haven't, we haven't read the result yet, but, it, but I think we, you know, we continuously try to get towards the better side of things. So in the interest of time, I'm going to move on to the next question. So does anyone, so the, the lady has already raised her hand. So I assume that you are the last one. Okay, so we go for this lady over here first and then the lady at the back. Hi everyone, um, I'm actually a recruiter here um, from Accenture. So I think mine is actually uh, more of a follow up support or uh, encouragement right for, for the for the people here. So we are all here for tech really. So my question is more of um, what kind of support can we actually give to our females? Right? Because I'm sure some of us here uh, perhaps we are working ladies, right? Uh, working mummies, right? So what kind of support that uh, organization or companies can we can we give to our female communities? So let's say support um you know uh mummies, right? Um who actually have a uh, I hate to steal this one. I actually have an answer to that. We give four months paternity leave, oh, so yeah. that the fathers can go home and um, and help uh, with the mummies. Facebook does that too. Yeah. <laughs> Start popping up. <laughs> yeah, I guess on top of that, um, Facebook has done some really good job on supporting uh, working mommies and we have flexible working hours if you have to pick up your kids and then do the parents meeting and also in our office every floor we have a mommy, mommy room is that called mommy room? yeah mommy room so like mother's room mother's, mother's room. room yeah mother's room so you need to do something like you know from here everyone around me is pregnant and in my office I know. yeah <laughs> yeah so i think uh, from home i think 50 uh, percent so uh, we have many full time, as I mentioned, uh, 12 of which are women, and eight are, uh, you know, and I think a lot of the decisions, uh, again, I think it's a, it's a tricky uh, conversation sometimes at times, right? Because people are saying you, you prioritize gender over skill. I think just put simply, right? Um, I do think that the conscious decision to make sure that there is that wider pool, that selection pool, can happen from from the national level. Uh, that's my personal conviction. I think that um, for within the product and engineering team, out of the out of this eight, three, three are women. So uh, the, the reason is, I think, that, yeah, so being plugged into communities like this, um, uh, that like attracts like um, argument, I, I do think that that's true. Um, and when you, when you talk about a pipeline issue, of course, that, that has some kind of variable to how many women are applicants, right? And that will then translate into, you know, what lands at the bottom of the, 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 the conversion, which is the higher the highest you make. Um, but beyond that pipeline issue, there are many other systemic issues, uh, systemic um, points that I think as managers of an organization, you can actually accept yourself to be very active in looking at them, if that was truly a problem. Because 
Of course, spaces is one. The, the more diversity there is, the better the outcome, and the better it is for business. So if that's the case, then to solve the business problem as a management level, you should be actively looking at those components. So one of the concrete things that you can do potentially is going out um, and uh, creating a, uh, a, what we call a mentorship program for, for um, internship, internship programs that is specific for women looking to go into the tech program. Um, another could be uh, having the uh, baby's uh, corner. So at home edge we have, so in the, the corner, um, two of our employees are our mothers. I mean, we have a care professional workforce of more than 400, of which 90% are women. Um, and then most of them become the flexible freelancing caregivers because they have children. So we, have, we created a corner in the office where they could just drop by anytime they want and um, have a, uh, 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 you know, babysitting a um, couple hours that we hire every week. So I think that's little things that you can do um, that will concretely really make a difference for them, um, particularly when I think about the decision making has to come from from management. Yeah. All right. So we're going to move on to the last question behind you, Ian. Just want to ask, do you think it would be wise for one man to develop? to develop the app first and then build a company around it, or should it be the other way around? So should you build the app first before a business, or build a business first before the app? I think it's more than Actually, that's a great point. I mean, that, that's something else I wanted to say, too. I think that that's great, like centering. You guys just learn, spend three months learning how to code. You know, you can launch your own products. Um, and I think it's great to start off with, with um, of course, learning how to, uh, uh, be, you know, like getting experience in a company, maturing your skills as an engineer, I think that's great. But at the same time, there's this other option as well of just um, teaming up with another co-founder, trying out, um, trying out uh, a solution to launch. In terms of whether it's the business first or the product first, um, I think most people, a lot of the founders ask, um, uh, sorry, aspiring entrepreneurs, so I'm kind of, actually, I have a sign as well about camp pros that uh, came out saying it's um, just kind of zonked, but um, uh, so forgive me for my incongruence. Uh, so actually, a lot of people ask me, how do I know if this is the right business to work on? And I think a lot of people spend a lot of time trying to solve problems after they've started the business. So meaning that they've started the idea, they, they think it's a great idea, and then they take it through a period of time and they're just trying to solve problems within the idea, but not enough time is spent prior to even jumping in. Uh, because now, you know, entrepreneurship is a sexy thing, it's a, you know, startups, right, that, that whole passion journey, but but what happens before you even launch should be a, should be a really uh, deep effort, uh, spending a lot of time figuring out if that business is worth uh, starting, uh, if that problem is worth solving. So computer science, Coding uh, is a very much about problem solving. So the same thing, apply, the same concept applies for starting a business. Is how big uh, to boil it down. I think to one of um, the mentors that I think it's very prominent in the hacker society is: Are you building something that people want? Right? Is this something that people would want to want to uh, not just need, but they will actually want to get it? And if you think of that that enough people want it, the market size, then that's something that then you should productize it. So sorry, I would love to share more, but I think I should probably should stop. Yeah, I think we can have a, a conversation, continue this conversation afterwards. Because of time constraint, we're going to stop now. And thank you so much for, uh, for the panelists to share your time. Take a time to share with us. You. you can leave the mic on the, on the sofa. All right, so if you remember, hopefully you remember,